All right, so here's an explanation of how the um, assortative uh, network condition collapses back to the disassortative, oh, sorry, the one without any um, correlation uh, condition. So it's for global spreading, we figured out we have this determinant uh, to set to zero. And so you can see an identity floating around here, so this is the probability that we connect to uh, a node which has k minus one other friends. Here's the probability that an edge has j minus one friends at one end and k minus one outgoing edges at the other, should be outgoing edges, uh, and that in some sense it's leading from um, this node to this node. Uh, probability of being infected when one friend is infected, that's the bees. So it makes a, a vector, so in principle this is an infinite network, so we have sums from zero to infinity. So no correlations, uh, EJK is RJ, RK, right? so they're not connected at all, so we're back to our original problem. All right, so we put that in here, and we can, so we'll get an EJ, uh, we'll get an RJ minus one, and an EK minus one, an RK minus one, sorry. And um, we can pull out the RK minus one, this one sitting here as well. And now we have something we can work with, right? So we see it's an identity minus a matrix, which is really an outer product, right? So there's a vector here and a vector here. It's just an outer product. In fact, this really should be on this side. This guy is just multiplying every column. So multilinearity of determinants means we can just pull this guy out. We pull one out of each column. So we get the product overall uh, K sitting at the front, right? Each one comes out separately. Ma the beautiful property of multilinearity. Um, this guy is just gonna shift so we're trying to find the determinant. So one way to do, one way to think about that is just right. So if we can find the eigenvalues of this guy, we multiply them all together. We've got the determinant. So we know what to do if we have an identity. It's just going to shift. It's a plus the identity, so it's just going to shift all eigenvalues of whatever this blob's this blob has uh, up by one. As I said, it's an outer product. So we'll write it in the. We'll put the J first. That's what we should have. Um, so outer products are simple, right? So it's it's some um, row vector times a Sorry, column vector times a row vector. So whatever that first column vector is, is the eigenvector. And we can just find out the eigenvalue by multiplying it by rj, rk minus 1, this guy, uh, summing over the k's, and whatever's left over will be our uh, eigenvalue. Whatever's in front of the, the resulting rj minus 1. So... <laughs> All right, so we've got this blob, we put an RK minus 1, we're summing from K equals 1 to infinity. Um, there's a minus sign still sitting here, K minus 1. So it, we're just, it, this just ends up being, just, re, just write the sum, we put our RJ minus 1 over here. So this is in fact, so this is the eigen, this is the whole eigenvector there. We have to do our shift, so we get 1 minus this blob. All of the other eigenvectors, uh, whatever they are, their eigenvalues are 0 because it's a, um, a rank 1 matrix. So uh, we just add 1 to 0, so we get 1 for all of those guys. So take the product, everything's 1 except for the first eigenvalue. So the term is the product of these guys. Uh, it's going to be proportional to it. We had the multilinearity piece at the front. Uh, it's going to be proportional to this blob. That's the crucial thing. We want that to be 0, and that is our contagion condition before. Notice it's not obvious here whether uh, contagion happens if this, this thing is greater or smaller than 0. Um, and we'll come to a, a much better way of thinking about this later on. But this, this, is, this is one way of um, getting to it, linear algebra. Awesome.